सो वी आर डन विद प्रत्यक्ष एंड देन देर इज एन इम्पोर्टेंट लाइन एक प्रमाण दिस इज प्रमाण दिस इज प्रत्यक्ष प्रमाण कैन ऑल्सो मीन्स नॉट जस्ट मीन्स ऑफ नॉलेज बट प्रमा प्रमा एंड प्रमाण आर समाइम्स यूज इंटरचेंजेबली इन एंशन क्लासिकल संस्कृत टेक्स्ट सो दिस इज प्रत्यक्ष प्रमा प्रत्यक्ष नॉलेज एक प्रमाण अनेन यश चेतना शक्ति अनुग्रह तत्फलम एंड देन इट सेज दैट दिस परसेप्चुअल नॉलेज ऑफ डिफरेंट ऑब्जेक्ट्स अटेन्ड एट द प्राइमरी स्टेज थ्रू द सेंस ऑर्गन एंड एट द फाइनल स्टेज बाय द बुद्धि is an anugraha chetana shakti anugraha is a favor to the self to the chetana shakti self has been called has been given various names in yukti deepika purusha atma chiti shakti chetana shakti etc all they mean all of them mean the same यश चेतना शक्ति अनुग्रह तत्फलम दैट इज दैट नॉलेज दैट नॉलेज विच वी गेन ऑफ डिफरेंट ऑब्जेक्ट्स इज अ फेवर टू द सेल्फ वाई इज अ फेवर बिकॉज वी हैव सीन एज प्रोफेसर पन्ना वेन ही वर डूइंग ऑन द फर्स्ट डे the whole sankarika merni as we have seen purushosti bhokti bhava the self exists because there must be an experient and enjoyer right and gyana of an object is something which is of the nature of उपलब्धि और अनुभव दिस अनुभव इज भोग एंड दिस भोग मस्ट बिलोंग टू ए भोक्ता दिस भोग इज एज इफ ए काइंड ऑफ फेवर माई ईटिंग ऑफ ए चॉकलेट और ऑफ ए स्वीट इज ए फेवर टू माई सेल्फ आई फेवर माई सेल्फ by satisfying you know my urge or yearn or my craving at a particular moment if at the moment i crave for a cigarette so smoking by smoking i am doing a favor to myself right and smoking is apprehending isn't it am i not tasting it am i not tasting it and to taste is to perceive why should we call uh, confine all perception only to visual perception right tasting is perception like i taste a chocolate i taste a cigarette chocolate gives me one kind of feeling cigarette gives me another kind of feeling gulab jamun gives me a third kind of feeling depends from context to context occasion to occasion right in the night i i want to feel take milk not in day time it upsets my stomach but it doesn't upset the same stomach in the night and i am addicted to suppose i am addicted to taking milk daily at night at the end of my food i have to take it. i have to take it right so coming back to the same topic that is when we perceive objects a photograph a picture of those objects is formed in our mind a picture of two kinds 
first of the sort of objects of they are and second of the taste they give us taste they give us whether we like them taste in the form of attitudes whether we like them or do not like them or are simply indifferent to them right if i like a certain thing have tasted it for a for the first time then an impression called vasana or sanskar here comes the word vasana or sanskar sanskar is impression vasana is subliminal expression impression vasana is formed in my mind which subsequently at some moment may may uh, 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 may propel me to desire that object again and if i have money and if i am going by the market i may buy the same chocolate again is it impression is form of the form of the chocolate of the kind of color it has and of the company that produces it like brand that produces and the taste it gives me i enjoy that taste right taste of tea and coffee as you know are different french prefer coffee and british prefer tea <laughs> and indian prefer both kinds of things at one time in young age i would prefer only coffee and now i prefer only tea <laughs> Prameya Shabda Daya. So, what are the objects? Prameya, the knowables, not the known, the knowables that can be known. He is not saying that need to be known, that must be known. He is not saying that, because ultimately, Sankhya says, all knowledge is to be given away. Chitta Vritti is Niroda. Yoga, chitta vritti niroda. All these vrittis, buddhi vrittis, modes of states of mind are to be kept aside if you want to find final salvation, because they bind us. They are addictions. They constituted one massive addiction. One massive addiction, and they are to be abdicated. and addiction binds us i know after this class i am so addicted that i have to go down for a smoke if i don't i'll go restless and and there would be imbalance in my mind tem- however temporary there would be imbalance in my mind we are all born with addictions and perhaps end up with addiction <laughs> unless we are yogis of the sort swami chenmaya nanda was or shankar was or ramanujacharya was and so on evam uttaratra api pramana phala bhava bhavo drishtavya similarly with other kinds of cognition like anuman etc we have the same pramana phala bhava right now now after a few lines comes the line uchate phalasya arthantar bhava adhikarana bheda buddhashayam hi pramanam adhyavasayaksham guru shashrayam phalam anugraha lakshanam na cha bhinna adhikarayo ekatvam arhati bhavik he says that the phala fruit of jnana is different from jnana fruit of jnana is different of, from jnana because this substratum 
अधिकरण भेदात अधिकरण इज सबस्टैटुम आश्रय बिकॉज इज सबस्टैटुम विच लाइज अंडर नीथ दैम इज डिफरेंट नॉलेज बिलोंग्स टू बुद्धि एंड फल बिलोंग्स टू सेल्फ राइट बुद्ध्याश्रयम ही प्रमाणम अध्यवसाय बुद्धि इज द आश्रय इज द सबस्टैटो ऑफ प्रमाणम ऑफ प्रमा ऑफ नॉलेज प्रमाण हेयर मीन्स नॉलेज अध्यवसाय याख्यम विच नॉलेज इज ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ सर्टिट्यूड अध्यवसाय ऑफ नेचर ऑफ एफमेशन यस दिस इज दिस This is a cow. This is a tree. This is a man. This is a woman. This is a particular kind of man. A particular kind of woman. A particular kind of house. A particular kind of chocolate. So and so forth. Purushashayam phalam anugraha lakshana. And the phal belongs to purush. Anugraha lakshana. Is it as if the buddhi does a favor to the purush? That's a favor to the purush. Why? Because purush is a bhogta. But purush can't have its bhogya without the help of buddhi, manas, and sense organs, etc. But why buddhi? Why not the sense organs? Why not manas and ahankar? Of course, sometimes the word antakaran is used for buddhi. but that is slightly in a loose sense and that is because because ahankar and man along with buddhi constitute what is called inner organ they are organs of course right they are karanas karanas they are organs but not organs of sense they are karanas in the sense of instruments instruments they are neither organs of sense neither organs of affection they are never the as karanas they are instruments so because purush is of the nature of experient anubhavita anubhavita who experiences and he can't experience without the help of others just as however strong i may be at the mental level i cannot walk without the help of my legs tell me however strong i may be at the mental level i have to walk only through my legs or through a substitute for them if i am crippled isn't that clear even at the bodily at the bare so at the so called bare physical level we need all these organs that belong to us if somebody's hearing sense has been impaired he is to be nowadays he can get a machine that may, that may enhance his hearing sense my friend arindam chakravarti has lost some of his hearing you know hearing power and he always uses some kind of machine he keeps it fixed here like that so no one indriya can be a substitute for another i can't eat through my oh chocolates taste very good i have smelt it <laughs> i have smelt it of course smell is also smelling is also a kind of perception but smelling is not tasting smelling is not tasting smelling is one kind of perception and tasting is another kind of perception what tastes cannot be done by smell and vice versa something may smell pleasantly and something also may be pleasant in taste also right so न च भिन्न अधिकरणयो एकत्वम अर्रति भवतुम एंड देयरफॉर देयर कैन नॉट बी अ यूनिटी 
of these two things, buddhi and purush. They might need other, but there cannot be a unity. Right? And then he says, after a line, after two lines, yathaiva hi ghatadeyo artha jnanam antarena na tadrupa na atadrupa iti na shakyam pratipatto evam jnanam api purusha pratyam antarena na vishay rupam na avishay rupam tatha cha shastram tat sanyogad achetanam chetanar vadim lingam iti vachadar. Slightly of some significance. Yet, just as the entities called pot, etc., pot, chocolate, tree, table, fan, so on, man, woman, all these are objects. Jnanam antarena, without our knowledge of them. Jnanam antarena, antar means, antarena means without. Without our knowledge of them. Na tadrupa, na atadrupa. We do not say they are, that they are of this form or of that, that form, unless we perceive them. A child who has not seen a fan cannot tell fan looks like what. <laughs> a man who has not smoked cannot tell what smoking feels like. A person who has not seen a lion cannot tell what a lion looks like. I mean, looks like means he should not even have seen a picture of a lion. A picture of a lion. This is how we normally teach children. This is lion, this is elephant, this is cat. So that when they come across these objects in the actual world, they may identify them as so and so, as such and such. Yathaiva ghatadiyo artha jnanam antarena na tadrupa na atadrupa iti na shakyam pratipatyam. We cannot say that this has this form or they, they have this form unless they are known evam jnanam api. Similarly, knowledge also purusha pratyam antarena without being given over to the self. Purusha pratyam as if there is a knowledge by purusha, as if. Purusha pratyam, pratyam antarena, na vishay rupam, na avishay rupam. Similarly, we cannot say that a particular object has been known or has not been known by the self. It is actually presented as known in a certain way by the buddhi to the self. What is this buddhi to the self? Because as I saw, as I, as I shall explain later, but let me briefly refer to it. Sankhya is one of those few philosophies in the world which say, which asserts that creation has a certain purpose, has a certain teleology, teleology. And the telos, telos, the final reference point is the self. All creation is meant for the, as the bhogya of creation, for the experience of the self, for the bhog of the self. And all creation is meant to liberate the self. So we have two purusharthas. Artha means objectives of the self. And what are those two ob twin edge objectives of the self? Bhoga and apavarga. Say apavarga is enough. You can say if apavarga is a higher objective, and there is no doubt that Sankh, Yoga, and Vedanta, and even Nyai regard apavarga as a higher objective, why talk of bhoga? He says, when do we seek liberation? When do we seek freedom? When we are bound. when we are bound. Otherwise, why should we seek freedom? Slavery would not have been removed had there been no slavery. 
freedom from slavery would not have been sought. Spartacus would not have rebelled had there been no slavery. Lokamanya Tilak or Gandhi or many other revolutionaries would not have sacrificed their lives had there been freedom already, independence, that means political independence, already during the British Raj. But there was no independence. This is how they felt. So they sought independence. So we now regard our India as independent India, independent of anybody else's rule. Isn't it? So, similarly, so uh, uh, what I was saying was, where I was, I forget the context. Yes, Apavarga. So we see Apavarga when there is bondage. And bondage arises from Rag and Desh. And Rag and Desh with regard to us, with regard to the objects of the world. All right? These objects are not only invite us to know them, but invite us to taste them, <laughs> to enjoy them, enjoy in the narrow sense, to enjoy them, enjoy them. We not only cognize them, when we see a flower, when we see a flower, we come to know its structure, its form. And a photograph is formed in our mind of its structure, how it looks like, so that we are enabled to recognize it as such when we see it the next time. Isn't it? But we also want to smell it, how it smells. We have not only perceived its structure, now we want to know its smell. That is tasting. Oh, very good smell. Very good coffee. Aroma of coffee. Aroma of coffee. How it smells. Or s smell of wine. <laughs> right? To those who are addicted to drinking. Aroma. Or the odor of a man or woman's body. Let's come to that. Odor of a man or woman's body, whom we love with an addiction. Tasting. Tasting. We not only see a body, we want to smell its smell. How it smells. We want to know that. So when we see a flower, we want to taste it. And if we like its smell, we want to possess it. A child, for example, would pluck the flower from the plant and, and put it in his pocket. Take it away. Take away hope. I have brought a flower. My grandson done this. My children would do it. And even I, I might have done it in my, uh, 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 in my childhood. Who knows? And even I might, I might do it. I might go to the market, find some beautiful object and buy it as a gift, for example, for my daughter or for my son or for my grandson or for myself. I will buy a painting and put it on, on the walls of my house. I like it. Otherwise, painting is not going to make any difference to my life. People would say, but it does. It does. It satisfies my aesthetic sensibility. I feel happy when I see a particular painting on my wall. I see, I see happy when I see, when I hear a particular song. I see happy. What is that, Kalidas? What is that, Daya? A 
a beautiful verse. I'm forgetting it. Anyway, so what is meant is that since Purush is a bhokta, of figuratively, of course, figuratively, Purush is a bhokta, all knowledge that is acquired by buddhi is offered to, prayachanti, prayachanti are given to the self for its, for its darshan, for its darshan, for its experience, so it becomes a bhokta. Should I end here? Should I end here or continue for more while? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Tatha cha shastram tat sanyogad achetanam chetana vadiva lingam. As the shastra says, shastra means sankhya karika. Sankhya karika. And this is karika 20. Tat sanyogad. Because of the proximity. See, why the buddhi only offers knowledge gained of the objects to purush and not other not sense organs because self and prakriti are in in contact and this contact continues up to the buddhi level because buddhi is the first evolute so the maximum proximity of the self is with buddhi not with manas ahankar or sense organs. Sense organs apprehend in a certain way, pass it on that apprehension to manasankar, finally to buddhi, to have a certitude, have an affirmative knowledge of a certain object, which buddhi obliges as if the self by offering that knowledge to the self, so that its, its character as a bhokta is fulfilled, is satisfied, right? Its character as bhokta becomes justifiable, not satisfied, becomes justifiable. Isn't it? Yes. If I say man is the rational animal, yes, I'll have to explain. Why is a man, why is man a rational animal? I say he is capable of using his reasoning power, capable of discriminating between good and bad, moral and immoral, high and low, poverty and richness, so on and so forth. But he is an animal because he is prone to what animals do. Ahara nidra bhaya maithunancha samanya metat pashuvidnaranam Dharmo hitesha madiko vichetu, dharme nahina pashuvish samada. He shares animality with the animals. Ahara nidra bhayamaitan. Same fear, same envy, same jealousy. You can see jealousy among monkeys, among lions, among tigers. tigers. You can see them. You can see them fighting each other over a female. Yes, you can see them. Jealous. Ahar is easy, vihar, and so Nidra, so forth. Adi, adi, etc., etc. So he's a rational animal. But he, can, he has the capacity to detach himself from this. And that is why we have an institution like judiciary. We think that there are people when they're assigned a certain position, where they, when they're entrusted with a certain job, and we, and we, uh, and uh, when, when a faith is reposed in them that they will according to their rational powers, then they can judge who is wrong and who is right. They would not be moved by passions. They would be impartial, detached. Right? So, judiciary or our attempt, a society's attempt to have a judiciary, it means it is attempt to have a rationality of man come out in a manifest form. Am I wrong? 
similarly each individual has this capacity once in a while we do regret our mistakes we may not regard ourselves as a mistaken at the time we are committing that mistake or committing that sin but later on on reflection in some sober moment we realize we were wrong we did something something harmful to that man it was not good on our part so that is what is rationality in us this is how we are made up of so what i mean is that we have the power we have the we have the disposition to be attached to objects and we mostly are attached to objects most of the human beings are attached but the ideal is that attachment brings in brings in bondage attachment or dwesh brings in bondage if we are if we uh, if we are inimical to somebody we harbor animosity to someone we may harm him continue to harm him and as duryodhanas and kauravas did for example to the pandavas they were only demanding five villages and duryodhan said the sutya gram dasyami you say five villages i will not give you even even you know the uh, the agra bhag of a what you call suchi yes need you talk of five villages so greed capitalism for example i am opposed to capitalism without being a marxist because capitalism is based on two things greed and exploitation and tell me if there is anybody who doesn't agree with this description of capitalism and tell me if these two things the two things are right greed and exploitation greed infinite greed infinite greed this is animality of man animality of man huh no 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 animal sometimes may be greedy not in every sense animal i'm not sometimes animals are more judicious sometimes animals are more judicious in fact man is worse than animals in certain respects animals do certain occasions to do certain things man always do 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 things <laughs> right i will not explain further <laughs> so do i close here yes. at the moment okay